every morning I wake up to an addiction that I have to manage. Promise not to laugh, but I am addicted to doing math. And it turns out my own parents were the pushers and enablers of this addiction. <laughs> but they saw an opportunity for math because of its objectivity, which they reason would insulate me from the inevitability of a prejudiced teacher or coworker. One plus one is always two, my mother used to say, regardless of your skin color or what part of town you're from. For me in math, it was love at first fractions, and I was, I was immediately good at it. My passion for math led me to a full college scholarship, a PhD in engineering, and my current job as a professor doing robotics research. Math was created to help us discuss very real things. If I have five coconuts and you have seven coconuts, then we have 12 coconuts. But math has largely been abstracted away from physical reality, such that we now simply teach that five plus seven is 12 with no context at all. This is powerful because once a person learns how to add, they can add coconuts, cars, or cancer cells. But it's problematic because math can be taught, mastered, and enjoyed with no meaningful context at all. Who here remembers the train problem? A train leaves Chicago, <laughs> right, a train leaves Chicago headed east at 70 miles per hour, and a train leaves Philadelphia heading west at blah, blah, blah. Most of you all hate that problem because you don't care anything about train schedules. <laughs> I don't care about train schedules either, but I love those problems. The trains are like the bitter peel of an orange that I tear away and discard on my way to the sweet, juicy fractions and cross multiplication. When you love math as much as I do, context can easily become the secondary consideration. In fact, the more a person loves math, the less likely they are to properly consider the context. History is filled with people who fail to consider the context of the really cool math problems they chose to solve. We need look no further than the inventor of the atomic bomb, who were both surprised and disappointed by its immediate use on the people of Japan. The last few months, I have asked my coworkers and students why they got into engineering. Every single answer was about being good at math and wanting to be on the cutting edge of technology. Not one single person mentioned a personal context, such as using math and engineering as a means to impact the community in some way. It seems as though too many mathematicians, scientists, and engineers have fallen for the myth of mathematical objectivity. Now, to be sure, my mother was not wrong all those years ago. Math is objective in its doing, but it's anything but objective in its using, the way we apply it, its context. It's okay to consider what part of town we're from when thinking about how to apply math. This is how math becomes subjective, because math is both subjective and objective. A few years ago, a computer science student wandered into my office and asked me about what type of career he should pursue. And I asked him what else he's into, and he quickly said basketball. Now, I meant to ask him what other science and engineering thing he was into, <laughs> but I accepted the challenge. And after a few seconds, I said, why don't you consider designing the scoreboard graphics for these big basketball arenas? And his eyes lit up as he told me he never thought to connect programming and basketball. The point of this story is not the impact that conversation had on him, but on me. Because later that evening, I realized no one ever had that conversation with me. And for the first time, I began thinking about how to connect my love of math with the other things that I'm passionate about. I also love basketball and football and board games like chess and Monopoly. I'm passionate about social justice, history, language, terrible puns, and pie, the mathematical constant, and the delicious dessert. <laughs> chess engines have been developed to beat the world's best players and have advanced the field of artificial intelligence along the way. Apps have been programmed to rapidly inform supporters of social justice movements and also to record and stream interactions with the police. Math-minded chefs have codified the Baker's ratio for what else? 
pie crust. For every three parts flour, use two parts fat and one part water. My mother, who's quite the mathematician herself, wants you to know that water should be ice cold. <laughs> the most mathematically gifted high school senior in the Dayton public school system. And I've got three daughters, so I'm gonna assume this kid is a young lady. She's somewhere right now honing her skills at discarding context because that's how you become good at school math. That's how we teach it. She'll be pushed to attend high profile universities and she'll be the talk of the town if one day she gets a job doing math on Wall Street or in Silicon Valley. But what if she cares most about solving some of the issues in this community? If she fails to connect math to a personal context, not only does she run the risk of attaching herself to projects with outcomes she would never directly condone, but the issues and the communities that she does care about will not get the attention they need. This is how failing to see the subjective side of math has an adverse effect on our communities. My father worked in child and family welfare for many years and asked me recently, how can math help solve some of the really difficult problems being faced by children and families. And I told him, I don't know. I wish I did. But there's a kid in Dayton, or maybe in Akron or in Canton, who's really gifted at math and who is really passionate about child welfare. This kid might have an answer to my father's question if they ever get asked if they ever feel empowered to connect these two great passions. This is where you all can play a part because this isn't just a problem among mathematicians. Society is so enamored by math that mastery is often seen as a great achievement or an end rather than the means to an end. So many people are impressed by my PhD in engineering, although they have no idea how I'm putting that knowledge to use. Hopefully you now see that people who love math can have huge blind spots when it comes to context, often to the detriment of our community. This is why we all need to be engaged in conversations about the subjective side of math. Yes, you, the person who struggled in math, because you're less likely to be distracted by definite integrals and partial derivatives. So, especially you. And here's how this conversation can start. If we can launch a robot 50 million miles through space and have it autonomously parachute down softly onto the surface of Mars, surely math can be used to solve some of the problems right here in this community. We also all need to be engaged with children differently about math, both the mathematically gifted and the mathematically challenged. A few weeks ago, I took my six and seven year old daughter outside and asked them to teach me how to add. I let them get rocks and sticks, whatever else they wanted. They got to choose, and that day, they exercised more choice in math than I ever had. We're always telling kids what problems to work on, what trains are leaving, what city at what speed. But mathematicians of the future need to get in the habit of applying math to context they choose. Lastly, I want to speak directly to the fellow mathaholics out there. And you know who you are. <laughs> Everyone admires us because they think math is really difficult, so they think we're working really tough jobs. But you and I know that most of us have taken the easy road because the math problems that we're working on don't mean that much to us. We have avoided meaningful context, which can be messy and personal. It can involve tough choices, compromises, and moral decisions. Context can keep you up late at night and even make you cry, but context can also be rewarding. You'll be up late at night because you want to be. You might be crying tears of joy because you actually touched someone's life. So I'm asking you, no mathematicians, I'm begging you to get off the sideline and get in the game. Apply this gift we've been given to something meaningful to your life. Because the problems that the world is facing, the problems that our communities are facing, they need us. And I'm excited to see what we can do when we stop just solving math problems and start using math 
to solve problems. Thank you.